What's up, guys and gals? I'm your host, Mike Pugh of the FBC Virtual Channel, and you're tuning in to an OBS tutorial. You'll be learning how to create unique backgrounds. It's very similar to this one. Come check it out. Now, this is the OBS Studio, or also known as the Open Broadcaster Software Studio. In order for you to follow along, in order for you to perform what I'm doing on the screen, in order to gear yourself as a video creator or YouTube creator to produce higher quality content using this tool, you're going to have to get the download. So that's why I brought you here. You're going to click this green button here and that gives you the options to get it on Windows 7 or greater, OS X 10.9 or greater, or Linux. You can also get the download for the OBS Classic. You can click this link here but I highly recommend for you to use the studio. I'm not gonna be doing tutorials on the OBS Classic, I'm just gonna be doing tutorials on the OBS Studio. Another thing I'm going to cover is how to use pixabay.com, which is a public domain. If y'all folks are not sure about it being a public domain, you wanna click this link here that says CC0 Public Domain and learn the details. If it's not a link, you can click here that says learn more. And that's from any of the photos that you see on pixabay.com. Then you go to the title deed of the CC0 1.0 license, which is right here from the Creative Commons. You click this link and that brings you to this public domain. All right, so you see we have some really unique creative backgrounds that I located on pixabay.com. So I'm gonna bring y'all folks over to pixabay.com so you can learn how to find these things and eventually merge it onto the screen. That is the whole purpose for this tutorial. So hopefully y'all folks are still with me, let's go. Here's some other cool backgrounds that I worked on. I'm gonna show y'all folks how to do the scroll effect. So you can see this is a Facebook cube type of effect. Really cool background, right? I got that from Pixabay as well. And let's move on and try this one. This is a YouTube one. Really, really decent scrolling to the left, I believe, or well, scrolling to the right. Um, pretty decent, right? Pretty nice. So I just like to play around with backgrounds throw myself in different positions on the screen and hopefully the audience likes it. So let's go over to Pixabay. And I'm going to remove myself, so here we go. All right, so I promised you that I was gonna remove myself from the screen. So how you would do that on OBS, if y'all folks been following my series so far on the OBS tutorials, you're gonna click this little eye right here, this icon, and that makes your video camera disappear. I'm on vid one. It could be also named whatever you wanted to name it. How you got that, I'm gonna do a review for those who haven't got to it yet. If you wanna bring up your webcam, you click the plus at the very bottom area of the sources. You can be in any specific scene that you chose to create or defaulted scene that says just scene right here. You're gonna click plus and then you're gonna go and click video capture device. And that gives you the option to create a new video capture device connection, which it basically ties your video camera to the OBS palette. This is, I, I'm gonna consider this a palette because you're pretty much painting onto it differing things that you want to merge onto the screen for your viewers. So what you're gonna do is either rename it or leave it defaulted. That's up to you in this blue box here. So you can re-highlight it and just type over it or you can backspace through it and call it something different. We'll call this video Two. Now it won't work actually if you already have the video capture device in. So keep that in mind. That particular source that you started or pre-initiated in any of your scenes will not be able to display, re-display if you try to create a new one because it's already currently occupied as a specific source. So keep that in mind folks. So we're going to go to add existing instead of creating a new one and we're gonna click that one, which is vid one, and then click okay. So now that allows you to merge your webcam directly into the screen, and then you can manipulate it using these red dots on the corners or in, on the top, lower half, or left or right, center portions of the screen. So you can move it around and play around, and as you see fit, you can make yourself pretty much relocate onto the screen wherever you wanna relocate it. So that's that, let's take that off. We're gonna remove it. If you wanna remove anything, you can right click. First, you're gonna left click on the actual source and then you're gonna right click 
your mouse, and then go to remove. All this stuff is being done, by the way, on a PC, Mac computer, or it could be a Linux computer. So let's go in now. We're gonna go in and we're going to actually start to create the palette of the background. In order to create your palette and start to paint onto your OBS palette section here, which is this dark blank section, you're gonna click the plus again, and then you're gonna go for image. So let's go on to what is known as pixabay.com. So we're gonna go on pixabay.com and we're going to change, we're gonna click here, the actual title, which allows you to go back to the home screen. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in here in the search field what you're looking for. So what, whatever type of background you're looking for, you can just call it background, or maybe you're into technology and you wanna call it technology. So there you go with that. And then you're gonna go look for what you want as your background. Maybe you wanted this as your background. Maybe you wanted this. It depends It depends on pretty much the colors that you're wearing, actually, because you wanna contrast the difference between one color and the next. Like with this particular graphic here, let's click it. As you can see, the black will clash with the black or the blue will actually help enhance the black. The differing contrasting colors on the screen will bring out the actual textures and pretty much bring out the visual a lot better or it will clash with the visual. So you wanna make sure for your background that it's a contrasting color different from what you actually are wearing so it can bring out that actual color. If you're wearing black and you bring out a black background, you pretty much are gonna disappear. That's how it works unless it's like a light gray and then you're wearing black that's a little different so let's go and try to find we'll go back up here and try to bring this in just to give y'all folks an idea how it will work so we're gonna grab this one right what you can do is click free download but a quicker way to do it is go right click and then click save image as a side note over here make sure you look at the license area here it says editorial use only so if you're not doing it for educational purposes like I'm using right now to create this tutorial, then make sure it's only editorial use. So that way, when you use this, you don't get into error or issues with this license, this CC0 public license. This is not to be used in any other way. If you're doing it, like I said, fair use manner, then you're fine because educational, you can even use a copyrighted content. So hopefully that helps. And so that applies for all the public domain in general. Make sure you check the licensing and make sure you see it says over here. And for every single photo on here or video or whatever that's on pixabay.com, vector, etc. Once you do that, you're going to merge that into a folder that's on your PC. It should be on your PC, Mac computer, Linux computer, whatever. You can actually create the folder name prior to doing this so that way you have a folder set up for it or it can be one that you're already preset if you don't have a folder just put it in your pictures location defaulted folder and then you can pretty much scoop it up and then re initiate or activate a folder for it the reason why I say that is because you want to organize your content while you're doing this so that way you don't waste time and you can easily find stuff so I have a folder for backgrounds that's what I recommend for you to do so let's click Save and then you're going to go into the folder and find that actual background that you chose and you can go back to OBS and you can either choose it this way through create new image and that will allow you to find it so let's do that to complete that I'll show you the other process that you can do that which is really really quicker we're going to go into create and title the name we're going to call it electric back background I don't know you don't have to name it that long but it's up to you whatever or you can call it electric or whatever we're gonna click OK and then we're gonna go into browse and we're going to go to pictures or background sorry and then find it open now that allows you to open it and once you're done the browsing section then we're gonna click OK now that actual source is built into your OBS palette and now it can be used as a background. 
So what do you want to do? You want to play around and manipulate this so that it fits into the screen because all this other dark here will be part of your video as well or your live stream. Once you click start recording or start streaming, that footage is going to be pretty much recorded. So what you want to do, you can right click if you chose and this is going to give you more options to play around with that actual source. So you can choose transform. Transform will allow you to actually resize it. So I highly recommend for you to try it out and play with it. You can resize and you can stretch the screen. That's what I recommend. If it's already like a horizontal uh, picture that you think is going to fit the whole entire screen, then you can click center the screen. Or let's see, let's go back and then you can click fit the screen. And that should fit the entire thing into the screen, but currently, it's not looking proportional because some of the sides on the right and on the left are not really squeezed in 100%. So what you want to do is go back, transform, and then put stretch the screen. And that will stretch and fill the whole entire space of the screen. So hopefully you like this background. If you don't like that particular background, you can play around with it and you can make it smaller and then add more. So talking about adding multiples or adding more, what you will do, quicker way to do that is to go to backgrounds, drag your folder down, and then grab as many backgrounds as you wanted to add. So say I wanted to add all of them <clears throat> all at once. You can drag them and drop them into the screen, and now you can manipulate them all and try to play with them all at the same time. You can do that if you wanted to. There's so many things you can do with OBS, which is pretty awesome. We're going to remove these. Now, in order to remove them, you can click them on the screen or you can click them in here and you can remove them like that. And then what you're going to do is go to remove. It's pretty much the same thing by clicking it on the screen and removing it or clicking in here and removing it. So hopefully y'all folks learned some of the tooling aspects there now in terms of building like a background like this hold on one second in terms of building a background like this what I did I just puzzled them in so this is one uh, photo this is the other photo this is another one and you basically got to just get creative to puzzle them in and I don't want to show you the whole entire process because that would take a long time but I do have a video that will help y'all folks to learn that stuff if you want to puzzle things in to try to make it look nice. Um, and I have another location that y'all folks can actually check out. Check this one out. We're going to go to Scene Collection. I built another one here, which is called Untitled. Hopefully, it won't crash, but sometimes it does. Now, let's see if it works. Click Untitled. And these are different backgrounds, virtual backgrounds. This one is YouTube. This is a YouTube one that I created. And then we have other ones. This is a Facebook one I created. And obviously my head is cut off. Let me fix that part. Uh, let's see, sorry about that. We're gonna put 10, there we go. I just went in and then changed the crop setting. So all these types of things are what you can do. Um, how you can make it scroll up and things like that, I can bring y'all folks back. Let's go back to our first build over here and the one that I initiated so y'all folks can learn. Now we'll go back, transform, and then stretch the screen. Now say you wanted to scroll this, what you're going to do, make sure you're on the particular source that you want to scroll. You can either click off, when it's clicked off, you can just click on the object and you see these red dots that indicates that you're activating that source. Or you can click here, like I said, and it does the same thing. Then you're going to right click here or right click in here and click filters when you select filters that will give you the ability to add a filter in and you can click the plus to add the filter once you do that you got the option to scroll you have other options as well but we're not worried about that we just want to scroll the actual background so when you click scroll it gives you the option to change the name just like 
most of the differing options that you add when you first start out. You're going to click OK or change the name. That's up to you. And then click OK. And then you have the option to move the horizontal speed or vertical speed of the scroll and you can control the speed from this lever here moving right or to the left right or to the left on either option so when you go extreme right it goes fast and as you can see it's moving very fast I found that it works well if you move it slow because the eyes are going to be affected so that is pretty cool when I say eyes are being affected whoever is viewing your video or your live stream their eyes are being affected by whatever you do in the background or foreground on the screen so you don't want to ruin their experience by making it crazy and super fast because that will actually hurt their eyes so instead you make it ha have purpose give it some sort of a purpose give it something that they will look at it and they'll say wow somebody really put some thought into that you know and that actually will create a fanfare reaction for you over time that's why you know graphic design all kinds of different things that people create with videography photography it does tend to create a large-scale reaction because it's our eyes that are actually being um, sensitized like we're giving people a, a digital product we are giving people a graphic to actually look at and and we actually do judge what we see it's just it's it's sad in terms of humanity judging in that way but we do now say you wanted to move it down or at an angle you can move one one way or one the other way and you can make it like that and that could be like some kind of cool transition that you created as a slide sliding in and sliding out it's really up to you but you would have to create multiple scenes and that's where scenes come in here in order to make it a slide see sliding in and sliding out so that's the transition effect if you wanted to use it as a transition so I just wanted to give y'all folks an idea of what you can do all of this stuff is through the open broadcaster software studio you can do much more than meets the eye with it and that's up to your creativity and your imagination the tooling pretty much is scene sources adding and subtracting adding the differing things that you have the options to to add you can also work on your audio which currently my audio is an audio input capture device that I chose to add so sometimes you may not have the audio input capture device activated so you want to make sure you add that in if you're recording so that way you can actually be heard um, depending on which which um, scene that you switch to you may not have an audio active capture device so you have to make sure that you have those active capture devices on at all times like when I first started this video nine times out of ten it wasn't recorded properly because I was recording probably without the audio capture device and I didn't realize it that's basically when you have OBS running with start recording or start streaming if you don't have that audio capture device or mix now I'm glad that I brought that up I just now got the mic slash aux that's actually what it was called mic slash aux and let's see it's not going to be showcased here so what you have to do in order to get that mic aux is going to be on every single slide that you go into in order to get that you're going to have to go to file and then you're going to have to click settings once you click settings you're going to have to go to audio and you can set it as an actual default so the defaulted one would be this one it says mic slash auxiliary audio device you want this one to be default so you click the down arrow and then set it to default or you can set it to the type of device that you have you don't want it to be disabled if you just if you decide to set it to your webcam then that's the only device that's going to be picking up that audio so keep that in mind whatever you choose make sure it's not disabled because if you click disabled then you're gonna have to add on every single scene into those sources you're gonna have to add an audio device 
So we click default, click apply, and then click OK. And all that should go and activate every single one. So you'll see the default will show up here and you don't have to singularly change anything in terms of adding a new audio source from here audio input capture or output you don't have to do that it's defaulted pretty much but uh other than that i'm done with this video joe love and peace to all mike peace on and off i'll see you in the next tutorials for the open broadcasting software studio or for any of these differing tools and software that i have to offer for y'all folks uh this is a free open source software and it's pretty awesome obviously you can see what capabilities it can it can do for you and um, what you can actually create behind the screen. You can do so much stuff. Um, with a green screen, you can remove your background. If y'all folks want to get that video, I have a video for that. You can look at the upper right corner. It should be an eye there somewhere in this video and you'll be able to get to it. Or you can check the bottom of this video's description area and that will help you as well to be able to remove your background with really, really great accuracy. I'm going to be working on those, trying to make more videos for that to actually help people pull out as many pixels on the screen as possible to really make it pop and that's that's one of the things i've been focusing on which is working on the visual aspects of my background and bringing out a much clearer higher quality uh web experience online experience uh video experience so other than that i'm out jello and peace to all mike peace on and up and i'll see you next time feel free to subscribe feel free to hit the thumbs up etc etc peace thanks a lot guys and girls for checking out my video for the OBS series if y'all folks want to get into more you can check over actually over here and you can get the actual playlist I'm putting the playlist in there and I'll try to put the next video whenever I get it done and then you can also subscribe up there or yeah up there peace